Greetings, I'm Parent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today, we're going to dig into our first threat for the 7th Citadel. This is going to be Dada Chem's Awakening. I'm sure I've totally butchered that, and I apologize. We're going to be digging in, going through this, hopefully this entire threat. That's going to be my plan. We're going to start at, of course, the very first part of this. We're going to go through a quick setup for everything, including at the end of our playthrough, we've decided we were going to use all of our Hope Reborn cards moving into this threat, so we didn't finish off the actual end of the prelude by giving ourselves the little stat blocks and different marks on our sheet here. So we're going to go through the what our characters are going to gain before we go into this particular threat. And then we're going to start at the beginning of this, go forward, we're going to explore, we're going to have a great time. This is the Seventh Citadel, and if you're excited to see if our characters can make it, then I need you to meet me at the table. The first thing we get to do from the prelude that we did not finish in the last video is we get to choose two boxes to mark off on our uh, building's site here. And if we go through and spend our Hope Reborn cards for every symbol that we check off like this, I'm going to be able to build and put another box on these buildings here. Also, when you do check off the buildings, you do gain that ability for your whenever you go through a preparation phase or, of course, any time it tells you otherwise. I think what we're going to do, this might be a little crazy, Let me and tell me in the comments if you think it's crazy, I'm going to pick all four of these. So we're going to use two of our Hope Reborn cards to get these and I'll show you how we're going to do that on the tracker on the back side of this but for now we're going to be able to gain two based on the end of the game so I'm going to put one on the watchtower and we're also going to put one over here on the great now we'll put it on the forum we're going to do it on the forum here and now it says well here I'll show you so right here, like it says, it says here during the preparation phase, I get to gain these bonuses. And from what I understand, the preparation phase happens at the beginning of each of the threats, like at the beginning of when you leave the Citadel. And from what I understand, the threat book is divided into multiple little adventures that you're going to go on, and you're going to be coming back to the Citadel and preparing and going back out again. Of course, there may be some that just continue on from where you were last time. I don't know. We'll have to dig through the, the adventure and find out. But from what I understand, getting one of these each time you prepare would be super, super cool. Now I do have four Hope Reborn cards here, which allows us to, at any time, I can block this in, with other Hope Re cards and gain back 10 life points. But down here is what we're going to use it for. The fruits of your actions are beginning to be felt in the world around you and in yourself. Check one symbol on the destiny page of the Citadel Leaflet, apply its effect, then block this, slipping it underneath one of the player cards. So we're going, and I have four of these. I have four of these cards here, so we're going to use all four of them. The first one you have to do is in the middle we're going to gain an advanced couple advanced cards. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two, three, four. We're going to cross off these here. And we're going to march right up this area here. If you don't think that's a great idea, please let me know in the comments below because maybe I can reverse course and go a different way to this after this particular mission in the threat book. <laughs> but for now, let's pick up some cool uh, abilities and let's build those other two buildings. Doing the buildings here will be super easy. We're just going to mark off that we have the grain silo and we also have the gallows. So now when we do a preparation phase, we're going to gain a one in each of those different uh, parts of our citadel. And those, of course, are found right here on the side on this side of the pamphlet. And so as we go, we're going to get one in each of these. And every time we leave, we're going to get one, which I think could be really good. Of course, it could be wrong. It could be an absolute joke, and I shouldn't have gotten any of those. But that's how we're going to spend all four of our Hope Reborn cards. Now, like I said, we also do get some advanced cards as well. To gain some advanced cards, we're going to randomly take four skill cards from the game box. One player gains two of these cards, or two players can each gain one of these cards. Then we're going to shuffle them back into their action decks, return any cards that were not chosen. There are an astronomical amount of these advanced cards. <laughs> Just an absolute massive amount. So I'm not even going to attempt to truffle shuffle these on camera. We're just going to take four of these and see what we get. We're going to take one there. We'll take one here. We'll take two more. We'll get one right here. And we'll also take one from here. We'll look at all four of these. We get to pick two of these. We can either give them to one person or we can split them up. The first one we have is Dexterity, which is allowing us to add two to a chain when it comes to these particular type of actions, which might not be bad. Next, we have Conqueror's Rage. I can ignore unsettling when I'm making an uh, attack action 
action here. Maximum uh, X to maximum X plus. I can discard one card from your hand, all right? That's a possibility. Not to mention, don't forget, these have those symbols on them too that we can use. Now, another thing we wanna look at the stars too. These aren't gonna help me too much with the stars, but this one's gonna give me an auto, so one more success when we draw it. And this says deceptive appearance. This is gonna be any type of conversation that's gonna help. That one actually might be really good. Then we have deceptive strike, which uh, is also pretty cool here. It says we can use a, uh, for the uh, cloak action or the stealth action, it can become a fight action up here, or we can turn them into, uh, what do you call them, uh, fight icons. Uh, we can also add one to a chain for the attack action here. So this is really tough. I got two attack cards here, so to look through those, I think that's a no brainer. We're going to keep that one. I think the other one we're gonna take is the Deceptive Strike. Just being able to add to chains, I think are really good. Now I'm gonna split these two. This one's gonna to go to Brooks. This one is going to go to Denim. And I think that'll be the best plan. We're gonna put these two back into this deck and somehow I'm gonna to try to get the Treble Shuffle. It's gonna be an absolute mess here. Let's see how this goes. Put some right there. We'll grab all these. We'll put those in here so that we don't know where the other two that we just put back in there. Now remember, we can do this twice because we checked off two boxes on our Destiny track. There we go. We put them all back out again. <laughs> And let's draw some cards. We'll draw this one, this one, we'll draw this one, and we'll draw this one. There we go. Four cards. Let's see what we get. <laughs> now we have gotten Perseverance. I can add a star, or I get to add one to a chain, then block this. So it's kind of only going to be used once per adventure we go out on, or of course, if we ever find a way to unblock cards. We got Conqueror's Rage again. Why even mixed up when I got Conqueror's Rage? The Enchanted Projectile. When you apply the following effect, assume you have selected cards with the keyword Projectile. When we do attack or any kind of uh, bullseye, I guess that's aim and action. I'd have to, no, I can't. I have to remember I, there are a whole ton of different. Uh, ones we can choose here. I have to remember what these all mean. And there's a whole bunch of icons in this game that we are going to have to learn from. So this would be like the target aim throw type thing. And let's see here. I can get two, I can negative draw either negative two cards. I get to ignore evasion. I get to add two of these uh, symbols right here. It can become two successes and I can block this or subtract one or, or lose a card. That would be really good. Not to mention it's a star plus some extra magic right there. That one's really good. Specialty. When you discard one card from your hand, discard this instead. Oh, interesting. And it's a success. I think, again, that's going to be really good. I'm not sure if I'm... Conqueror's Rage, again, has not made the cut. Sorry, Conqueror's Rage. Now, Perseverance, though, I get a star or I get to add one to a chain. I think that's better than the specialty. We're going to get rid of specialty. We're going to put that back in here. And we're going to give this one again over to Brooks. He's going to be kind of our attacker guy. And this Perseverance card is going to go over to Denim. At this point, we are going to put these back in the box. We're going to block the four Hope Reborn cards is what it tells us to do. On top of that, we also have a special card that we picked up during our adventure at the very first part of it. It is our, and I have it inside of our journal. It's this card right here. It's our Flagellancia. Uh, if we ever, if you want to take the following action, you must be on the same train as this plant, or and block one card with the keyword companion. In other words, I can hopefully take some of these back and get more production in our society. But we found this in our uh, first adventure there. Like I said, we're going to block these. I get to keep these, from what I understand. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, we'll put we'll put these into our quest deck, our quest tie. T t tile that we have. Well, apparently I can't talk today. We're going to keep that out just like this. We also have our bas bas past and banished cards that we don't have any at this moment. Of course, there were the banished cards from the original mission. I put those in a special area just so that I don't have to keep piling them up on top of this. But as we banish cards during this particular threat, we'll put them there. So we'll block these. We have these three tiles out and ready to go. It's time for us to jump into our adventure. I think that's about all we have to do. Except for, oh, there is one more thing. I have to shuffle those two cards that we got into our decks so that our decks are going to be all set to go. And that's we're going to do or shuffle them in there just like that. And I don't see why we wouldn't. Of course, the game tells us not to do that. I'll take them out of there, but I believe that would be what we do. Let's read in here as to how to start our mission. Here's the introduction to the first mission in our threat. It says no smoke without fire. It's going to have this symbol on it is going to be the one that's going to be based on our particular mission we're going on. It says here, the memories of your captivity have been fading ever since you took over leadership of the Citadel about a cycle ago. You and Thurder are taking inventory of the food supply when you hear the cry of a lookout. Leaving your companion to get on with the job, you race towards the boy who shouted. When he sees you, the boy points east, where a plume of dark smoke rises into the sky. It is a sign of human activity or a bushfire set by lightning. 
There have been major thunderstorms in the neighboring territories recently. You need to know for sure this can serve as your reason to leave the camp and discover the condition of the world since the reversal. Puck, can you bring me a ground shiver? Your camp assistant emerges from the shed with the device, one of the very first necrodrudic creations, capable of detecting the presence of burrowers. Without it, it would be too risky to venture into the collapsing lands. And you are one of the few who knows how it works. You pack your scant equipment and give a few instructions before setting off, eager to find out what this fire is all about. So at this point, it does give us some reminders. Certain adventure cards are linked to a particular scenario. When the number is associated with a scenario pictograph, you must take it without looking at the other available adventure cards. So like I said earlier, ours is going to have this particular thing. If we see a green card that has that, that is the card we have to take for this mission. Of course, if we don't have that, we'll just grab whatever the green one is. And of course, there's no green and there's a gold. The gold will be the one we take. Our goal, primary, identify the cause of this fire. Head east to identify the source of the smoke seen from the citadel. Preparation. You are at the citadel. For this scenario, your ground sh shiver is level three. Check the corresponding box on the community page of the citadel leaflet. I'll do that momentarily. Set all life counters back to zero, then pull them back up to whatever your player count is. And we're playing with two characters, so all of our life counters are going to be set to 20. Each hero shuffles their action deck and draws two cards from their starting hand. Return all Hope Reborn cards that are blocked, which means we're going to place these back in the box for us to be able to grab later, hopefully. <laughs> Those are good cards. Remember to look up your side quests, the cards on the world map, and the effects of your built buildings. Put a 75 card into play. Each player places their figure onto it. Then right here it says stop reading you now, for now and place the bookmark here. You may save your game as long as the bookmark is here. When you run low on life points or you think you have reached your goal, go back to the Citadel where you may read the epilogue after removing the bookmark. Here's our bookmark. We'll just place it right in here. But of course we're going to take care of all the things that these talked about throughout your preparation. First off, our ground shiver is three, so we're just going to mark that in our book here. And then during the preparation phase, remember each one of those buildings is going to give us one into each of these different categories. We have one production, one defense, one knowledge, and one influence. This brings us to four, two, one, two, which is pretty cool. We'll look at our characters real quick, and then we'll begin our mission. And there are a couple things I do need to talk about once we get going here. The first thing is we're going to take our deck. We're going to give it a truffle shuffle here. So Denim is all set to go. We do have some items from the last time we played. I believe before we go, I could switch these out with any of our players. It's not bound to our characters. I believe we can swap them out. But I think we're good where we are. I do have a metal wire and a flail. She has a uh, quest that has to do with blood ties that she got at the beginning of the game. We get to draw two cards. She has with her in her hand second wind. I can choose up to three cards in my discard pile and shuffle them back into my action deck and then block this. Not a bad card to start with. We can keep ourselves going here. The other one is spare no effort. You may discard this card during the gear up step to apply the following effect. At the time, at any time, sorry, uh, the result step, draw one additional card and reveal it. Oh, that's also really good. All right, she got, she got two real good cards. Meanwhile, over here, Brooks is going to shuffle up his cards. We're going to give him a good old truffle shuffle here so that we can mix up all those cards real good. Then we're going to grab two cards and start our adventure. He is going to start out with his axe. He's got this cool axe that we found in the very beginning adventure. We're going to draw two cards. See, we found. He also has a dormant strength, which uh, if when you have four or more cards with the keyword weakness, I get to take a 321 and banish the card. I, I don't know if I ever want that to happen because weakness cards are really aren't, aren't that great. We got Perry. If you have if you have selected a card with the keyword weapon, I can use two strength to give myself two defense. And okay, so I can actually, so if I decide to use this, I could then, if I have two strength on some cards, I can just use both of those icons up here to give myself a couple defense. That's not going to be bad. And then I can save my energy for any action. I can draw one less card and discard one card from your hand. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, I can discard my parry card to save myself some energy. Not a bad deal. There is only one 75 card in the game box. It says here, the Citadel stands majestically before you across the distance. That still separates you from the camp noises. 
and the clamor of voices reaches your ears. Clearly, there is some great activity over there. So we'll put that card right here in the middle. Before we do our adventure, I do want to mention, well, first let's put our news on here. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, we're going to crank this up a little bit. I have added three of the expansions that you get from the game when you do the full end Kickstarter pledge and everything, all the, all the cool things that go along with it. We are going to be adding in the, uh, which ones are these? We are going to do the unveilers. We're going to be doing the v Valigard, uh, uh, the Ella Alabec, and then we also have the uh, historic book recounting Kel's glorious past. Uh, these are all going to be neat. The unveilers, the knowledge is power, and the M Elbeck, Elbeck Valengard. These are the different expansions we are adding to this. Important, don't open box A until the game tells you to do this. So I've added all these cards to the boxes, so they are set to go. Also, when we started the game, this card was on top. I forgot I should probably mention how this works. We saved our game with the seven card, I think, and then this is the eight card that says when you resume your game, it's supposed to flip this and it kind of tells you just how to put everything back out. You return the cards into the past and put all of the weather cards back into play then. Uh, then each player puts back into play the character card, the action deck, the discard pile, and all of their items in front of them. Open the threat book where the bookmark is, remove the bookmark, then read the introduction to the scenario and return this. That's kind of what we did, and that's what, why you saw all those cards out here. Here is our tile. Let's take a look at it. I never actually looked at the tile. It looks like we have our citadel over here that we can go do a uh, search on it, in our spot C, I think is what it's called, and we're going to gain a 77 card, and that is free, so any one of us can do that. And I may make a few errors when it comes to what exactly every one of these icons is, but I'll do my best to try to make sure I get them right. This is actually a spot observed, not a spot C, I think is what I said. <laughs> But I think you get the idea. Also, as I'm playing through this game, please note that if they do make any uh, errors post a launch of this video, to make sure that you check the pinned comments. Also, if you notice anything going through here, please tell me and put a timestamp so then I can put a Klingon subtitle right down here so that people watching this in the future can turn those subtitles on and be able to learn from some of the mistakes I made. All right, let's see what we're, what we're gonna do. We can either go check this out or we can go to one of these two places, which which are going to be our exploration cards. And there's a stack of one cards right here, so we're gonna shuffle these up again. And we're gonna put these off to the side because I believe this whole area is gonna kind of have these cards available for us. So we're gonna place them off to the side. We're gonna draw one here, and we're gonna put one right there. Let's start with Denim, checking out 77 right over here. Might as well take a look at it. Now there are two 77 cards, but one of them does have a flag that we are not using right now. It's like this male flag. We're not gonna use that one, so we're gonna deal with this card right here. And we're gonna place the other one back in the box. And it says on the back of this card, you are only a hundred paces from the entrance of, to the camp. A slight euphoria overcomes you at the prospect of finding what should be called your home. We'll flip this over. And every, in order to do this action, everybody has to be on it and do the action. And then it says here, each unconscious character gains one life point and regains consciousness. Discard the, all the cards on the board, including your terrain card. Open the threat book to where the bookmark is and read the epilogue to end the scenario. Okay, so we have to actually come back here. Okay, I was a little confused about that, but now I'm not confused at all. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So once we think we've finished it, we come back here and do the go visit, I think is what this one is. And then we're able to check out the epilogue of the adventure. Now we need to go this way. Since we have to go east, we're going to head east. If we look on the card, it's going to cost us four energy with zero successes in order to move. Or if your ground shiver, shiver is level three or higher, then it costs nothing. So ours is three or higher. So we're not going to have to use this four plus. So we're just going to flip this card. We are going to have, we're going to go together and check this out. Now the advantage of going together is really if something happens that has, has uh, if it kind of cascades down, like this becomes a normal event, which then turns into a, an event you have to do right away and things of that nature, having both of us there allows us to be able to kind of switch between the characters we want to. If I decided I just wanted him to do it on himself, then if there was like multiple steps to this, he would be the only one that could do it, which could be kind of, un, uh, which might not do that, be that good, especially if it's like a leadership type uh, skill that we have to try to do. 
she's really good at those. Where it comes to fighting, he's going to be actually really good at those. So having them together, I think most of the time is going to be our most beneficial thing. So going forward, unless I say otherwise, we're going to be doing all of our checks together. Our characters are going to work together on all of these different things. They're always going to be together unless there's something that says otherwise. That could, of course, be detrimental because there could be something that says like every involved character takes a damage, which could be bad. So that there, there are some times that it might not be good. This one says, a young woman marches in your direction. The bulky bag she is carrying bears the emblem of the chain. Three hands, two of which are held by the wrist. If you would rather go on your way, discard this. Otherwise, I could do a mandatory dialogue thing right now and read 105, which is probably what we're going to do because, you know, we're investigating. We're not just going to run off here. Though she is uh, chained up. So actually, I also want to check out what chain is because that is an asterisk. So it might have some info on what this is before we do this actual uh, test here. Chain is an organization established during the War of the Worms that delivers news, inquiries about needs, and exchanges goods between the different communities of the collapsing lands. Each of its members, Lynx, follows a well-defined route that they know perfectly well and that they travel by taking the singing lane or by using a ground shiver. Keeping up with learning about the lore of the game, we have the War of the Worms, the name commonly given to the conflict between the Worm Masters and their burrowers. I think we learned about those and the Necrodruids at the end of our last uh, adventure here. The Kel Protectorate and its allies, the Necrodruids. The War of the Worms, which lasted for nearly 50 cycles and ravaged the country to point of giving it the name the Collapsing Lands, seems to have ended with the reversal, which I believe we also learned about at the end of our last adventure. The other thing it mentioned was the singing lane, and I'm going to go through a lot of these uh, lore dumps really quick here, and I'm actually put a timestamp so you don't have to worry about these if you don't really want to learn about these. You can just skip right past this. A wooden walking on stilts built by the Cal Protectorate during the War of the Worms to alert travelers to the presence of burrowers, small metal bells hung on stakes driven deep in the ground, ringing when the burrowers approach. Although dilapidated, its structure allows it to resist collapsing. The singing lane still crisscrosses the collapsing lands in many places. One passage mentioned the Worm Masters, and it says here the name given to a, the person or people who led the burrowers in their attack on the Kel Protectorate, which we'll learn about shortly, during the War of the Worms, which of course we just learned about, which is pretty sweet, in order to bring it to submission. Their identity remains a secret, and it is not known what has happened to them since the reversal, or even if they're still alive. Looking at the Kel or the Kel Protectorate, it says the Kel has long been a city-state like no, any other. Thanks to its central geographical position and its unrivaled military power, it gradually developed a hegemonic policy, considering the other cities as its vassals. While most of them did not mind, Gadlorak ended up opposing this in an eventual rebellion that saw its mages clash with the Kellian Iron Legions. It was during this conflict that the Worm Masters made their appearance. And the cool thing is, if you look there, it says when your, I think it's knowledge score, is 10 or higher, I get to read 598 in the dialogue book. But we don't have that yet, so I don't get to learn about that, which is really cool. But now we have another thing to learn about, which is the Galdalrock. Galdalrock is a city-state located south of the Sunset Mountains, renowned for its mages trained in the Arcanium. Since rebelling against the Kel Protectorate, the city has isolated itself. Its arcanists have proven powerless in the fight against the burrowers. And lastly, we have a pretty long section about the Necrodruids. It says, in the early days of the War of the Worms, the Kel Protectorate was powerless against the burrowers. The Druid Galadal of the Burning Bramble saw an opportunity to restore the influence of the ancient Druid clans, which was waning in the shadow of arcane and science. He transgressed the sacred principles of the Order by combining his knowledge of nature with that of black magic. He created the first plant abominations, the only ones capable of fighting the underground vermin and saving what was possible from the territory subjected to their assaults. Thus began the advent of the Necrodruids and their places of power. The Citadel's slave gardeners were forcibly conscripted to foster and maintain the horrid creation's birth there. 
eventually dying of despair, exhaustion, or as victims of accidents. Each citadel is controlled by a powerful necrodruid, the most famous of which is Nindazar. Dadachom, oh, this is the, this is actually, Dadachium is the one that we're actually doing some kind of quest for, that's part of the thread here. And then we have Sessinihom, which I'm going to pronounce every one of these wrong, and Bibaranek. The monstrosities created by the Necrodrudes have spread, often out of control, to various regions, where they threaten humans and wildlife alike. As such, many inhabitants of the collapsing lands consider the Necrodrudes to be unscrupulous slave drivers who have done more harm than good. And now with that knowledge, I'm actually more excited to talk to these people. For a second there, I thought this person might be a captive of some kind that might have been escaping from something, but no, this is really a messenger from what I understand. So let's check out Read 105 here. Now, in case this is your first foray into the Seventh Citadel and, no, and haven't watched anything else or anything about it, there is a whole book of dialogue, which is different from the Seventh Continent. The Seventh Continent did not have this. Uh, so this is a truly new thing for the game, and it may keep people more interested in the game, or it might actually be distracting because it moves away from the cards and goes right into a book. But here's 105. It says... Good day! You look familiar. I saw you last time. I was at the Citadel. Or whatever's left of it. Is everything all right? I don't know if you remember me. I'm Sable, a member of the chain. We connect people by bringing them letters, packages, and news. And there's plenty of news on the road between the garrison of the Outer Edge and Fort Cutthroat. So here it says if in the involved character has two or more cards with the keyword barter and you want to barter, read 99. If you just want to make conversation, read 144. If you'd rather resume your journey, immediately return to the dialogue book. I don't have enough cards with the keyword barter. Um, if we're looking for anything that has barter on it, the only thing I have is like trinkets and secondaries and things like that. I don't have any items that help me with barter. So I am going to just go to 144 because I might as well make conversation. If you're playing the scenario with pumpkins, a bridge, or a meeple, which I'm not doing any of those, I can I have to turn to particular things on the uh, in the books and have to do with objectives here. If a character has a card with the keyword fugitive, I don't think I have a key card with the keyword fugitive. I have none of that in my book or group or anything. So otherwise, roll a die and apply the corresponding effect. All right, my goal is to try to roll on this book. Let's see how well I do here. I've got a die is going to kind of drop it down. We got a four. It says to read 150. I'll let you in on a secret. Officially, my route goes from Fort Cutthroat in the south to the garrison of the Outer Edges. But in reality, I never venture that far north, past the Stone Arch, where the, a community of former fishermen live. It goes too close to the territory of the Blue Giants. I have no desire to deal with them, but we'll learn a little bit about them in just a second. Once, however, it, I made it all the way to the garrison of the Outer Edges. When I got there, I thought I heard voices, so I knocked on the door, but no one answered. And when I realized it, that it was rigged to blow, I decided not to push my luck. <laughs> Good choice. It says, if this is your first time reading the dialogue, gain one knowledge and return to the dialogue book. So I'm going to put one knowledge onto our community page, which gives us a total of two right now. The Blue Giants are a tribe of blue-skinned asexual humanoids, which are generally one and a half times the size of a human. So unlike the, uh, I guess you could say, uh, Green Giants that are uh, that do canned vegetables out in the sewer of Minnesota, this, these are savage and fearsome warriors. They live in an inhospitable region northwest of the Collapsing Lands, formerly known as the Forgotten Wilds. Some claim that Blue Giants can regenerate. Others claim their blood is an extremely potent poison that kills anyone who comes in contact with it. All agree that surviving an encounter with a blue giant is worthy of a song. Oh, I got a good song for you. Ho, 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 blue giant. <laughs> All right, anyway, I don't have $15. We're going to go on. I don't get to read 272. After our fun encounter with our character, we're going to discard that into the past. We're going to place out the new tile, which is number 94, and it states a pink plank track winds through this desolate territory. Further north, a strange stone slab looms above the dusty ground. So we're going to put this down. Now, of course, looking at these, there might be numbers in these, which are going to be able to give you like hints or extra cards or things of that nature. I don't see any. I do see this purple thing here, which is that plant that we have. 
around. There's information, I guess, on the plant, but I don't have any companions that are going to help me bring this back. So we're just going to put this here. And now I have to try to travel to this, which I'm allowed to do using a move action. I'm going to use one energy and you may move a figure to an adjacent terrain card as long as you do not exceed your maximum weight. Now our maximum weight is seven because we are playing a two player game and our max hand size is three. Now I'd only have one item here that's even gonna give me any weight and that's this flail. So I only have one, so I'm doing just fine. So we're gonna move over there. We're gonna have to draw a card to exert a little bit of energy. We have found ourselves fortitude. You may apply the following effect during an action you are involved in, even if you are not the active player. That's fantastic. One involved character may apply the wild symbol or ignore a, uh, the amount of cards you need to draw. Uh, and then I discard this. So that's that. Well, that's a really good card. I have that card now in our repertoire. I can now move Brooks over there. Brooks is going to join us. Now, Brooks doesn't have to draw any cards because of the bottom part here that says, if you move to a train card where there's another character figure, I get to go with negative one energy. And since it costs one to move over here, I don't have to pay any other. So that's the end of that. Now, if we look at our card here, there's a couple things we can do. We can either go spot C, I think is what that one is, or we can examine, which is the other icon we have up here. We have a spot observe and we have an uh, examine. Now, if we do the examine one, it does have a red staircase here, which means all characters uh, in the game have to be on there and have to perform that action, which is kind of cool. So we're going to actually come down here. Now, I do have to pick an active character when I do uh, do a action, even though we're working on it together. So I'm going to have Brooks do this one. Brooks is going to be our active character, but I am going to have Denim be part of the deal. And we're going to check out card 61. Now, notice it has a little symbol next to it. That that means that you're going to go looking for a 61 card. If there isn't one there, then there isn't a card to pull. Now, if it did say to go for a card 57 and there wasn't a card 57, since it doesn't have that dot, you would pull everything from the past and put it back into your boxes so you can actually find a 57 card. But for now, we're going to go grab, grab card 61. There better be one because I've never been here before. Then it states that a plank road on stilts wide enough for a cart is bordered at a regular interval by stalks hung with little metal bells. On the back side here, it says the so-called oh, singing lane was built during the War of the Worms to warn travelers of approaching burrowers. Since they had no way of detecting them, the slightest underground tremor causes the stakes deeply embedded in the ground to ring their bells. A single imminent danger, even though, or sorry, to signal imminent danger, even though the lane is now in disrepair and less reliable than your ground shiver, there is something reassuring about being near the Citadel. So again, I can take a 152 card if available, and then one involved character may choose one card in their action deck or discard pile and add it to their hand. Then I'm going to banish this. So I'm going to banish that card into our banish cards area. So th and when it says if I want to check for a 61 card, they're not going to find one because I think there's only one. When I do look for them there, I do look behind them just to make sure there's not multiples. And there was only some 161 cards. So we're never going to see this again. But I do get to grab a 152 card and we also get to grab a, uh, we also get to grab a card card out of our uh, deck as well, or discard. We don't have a discard. So we go to 52. It says, oh, it says, I'm confident. How about that? You feel you can overcome any obstacle. So during any action, I can then give myself a success or add one to my chain, and then I can return. This is a temporary blessing. We're going to give that to Brooks. Brooks is our active player. He's going to take that. I also have to put down some of these exploration cards. I forgot to do that when I revealed the tile. You're supposed to that when you reveal a tile. I'll put those down just like that. And I'll, from what I've gathered, it looks like every one we have has the same backing to it, where it costs us four energy unless your ground shiver is three or higher. So since all our ground shiver is three, all these cards are going to cost us no energy to check on. The card I chose for my action deck is going to be Brooks is going to grab Determination. I can gain a star and then block this. So I think having, now he has the ability to actually pull two stars at a moment's notice for any action, which is going to be super good, which means he's probably going to be doing a lot of these actions right now, <laughs> which is super good. Now, I do have the ability to go check out 57. We might as well take a look at that as well. We'll have Denim be the person to check this out. It says this slab will probably give you access to an underground area. Unfortunately, you have no idea how to open it. So on the back here it says perhaps you can only it can only be operated from below or you have to wait to find out what secrets it holds 
uh, if your knowledge score is seven or higher, I can read 18, mine's two. Then it, if you would rather resume your journey, return this. Otherwise, during the draw step of the following action, negative 10 for each uh, feather card on the world map where a strange slab can be seen. And the involved characters may pay the cost collectively by drawing from their respective action deck. So, oh my gosh, 90. So basically, if I can find nine uh, feather cards that have this, where a strange slab can be located, this would cost us zero. So this is a very, I think, long-term uh, thing to do, which probably can help us move throughout this uh, the, the this uh, world, I should say, a lot easier. But for now, this card is it's not going to help us at all. So I'm going to return this to the box and we'll continue on. Now remember, we have to be going east to find this fire. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Brooks do this. I'm actually not gonna have Denim join him. I'm just gonna have Brooks go on his own. Let's see how this goes. Brooks is gonna check out this card. He has found a jagged rock. You have picked up a stone with a sharp edge. It will make an excellent projectile. So I can use this as a like a trap, a aim throw, or a fight action. I get an extra star, and then I have to discard this. And this is a projectile, which is different from his axe. So if I go into an attack, I can use both of these because they have different keywords in here. If this was a weapon, I would only be able to pick one of them. This does not cost cost any weight, so right now we still have two weight on Brooks. I do get to look at card 90. And there are three of them. Two of them have flags we're not doing. And in the future, when I'm looking through cards, if there are ones with flags that I'm not going to use, I'm not going to be telling you I'm finding those anymore. I'm just going to grab the ones that pertain to what we're doing. There is only one other 90 card, and it says, The ravages of the burrowers have devastated the landscape. The once green and hilly region is now a wasteland traversed by a path of broken planks. The great sea has taken the opportunity to spread out on all sides, pushing its northwestern shoreline all the way here. All right, so we have this. Okay, so here's the shoreline down here. We don't want to go. Here's that uh, plank bridge again that we don't have to deal with. Uh, and then we have oh, we have some new places to go. We can either keep on going east, which is probably our plan, or we have a new area we can go up to, which is going to be 161 up there, which is going to have us put down a different exploration card. Now, having revealed this, I am going to put a card here, but I also have to put a three card, which I don't have sitting out in front of me yet. So we're just going to grab our three cards. We're going to should give those a good old truffle shuffle here. Now remember, I do have all the expansion stuff in all of these uh, different exploration cards here, so we may come across some of that stuff. I don't think we have yet, though I actually probably wouldn't even know if I did come across it. We'll place down a three right there, and at this point I could move. We're going to have, I think we're going to have Brooks move. Brooks is going to move. He's going to pay one to the, uh, to in order to move across. It says here that he gets improvised. I can use the, I, any action can give me the ability to have an extra link here. Now, sadly, if I was smart, I would have used probably this card to make myself uh, draw one less card to save my energy, but instead, I'm going to take Improvise into my hand. Now, remember, I do have three cards, so I do have to get rid of one. I do have a lot of cards that do with fight, so I am actually going to get rid of this Save Your Energy and discard that into my discard pile. Interestingly, I could go up here and check out some really cool new area here, but I, what we're going to do first is move her over. It's free because, of course, I don't have to pay because I'm moving to a tile with somebody. Over here, of course, we do have a go see go visit action here of 120 so we're going to pull that card and see what it is i'm going to have uh we're going to have denim check that one out and see what she finds now in this particular case there are more than one 120 cards so we're going to kind of give these a little mixy mixy here mixy 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 we're going to use this one right here we we'll return the other one to the box and let's see what it says remaining alert you inspect the area it seems safe enough to take a short rest oh okay that's not bad it says here you can use this time to rest or prepare yourself mentally for an upcoming trials. Discard all 120 cards from the adventure deck without revealing them. If the permanent event card attached to your train card shows a fight action, discard this immediately. Otherwise, you must take one of the following actions. I must take one of these. You may choose up to two cards in your discard pile and add them to your hand. I have like one. Um, or for nothing, I can have one involved character unblocks one card or I can add three cards to my thing, and this doesn't help me at all. I really didn't need to do this at all. This doesn't really do anything for me. I've only got one card in my discard pile, and I don't have any blocked cards. So I think the only thing I'm going to do 
is this action here, which is going to allow me to put this one card I have in my discard pile back in here. Now, normally that means I'd randomly grab three cards, but I only have one. So I'm just going to put the one card back in Brooks' deck, and that's it. I'm going to put this into the past discard, all of our 120 cards from the adventure deck without revealing them. So I'm going to put all of them into the past. We're going to discard them. So I'm going to flip over my, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over my past cards so I can just stick them in there because I'm not, I don't get to look at what this is. It could be something even better or it could be something even worse. Who knows? But now I don't get to do that action anymore because I don't have any 120 cards in my, uh, in my deck at all. So these two are going to go into the past. One revealed, one we don't know what it is. I think we're going to continue east. So at this point, I am going to have, I'm going to have Brooks do it. And I think she's going to help out. Well, she's going to help out. But Brooks is going to be our active character to check this out. This, again, doesn't cost us anything because we have a ground shiver three or higher. This one says, a young man is sitting in front of a pile of kindling that he has not managed to light. I'm going back to my people in Kel. Life in the wild is not for me. I don't know anything about mushrooms. I'm too clumsy to hunt. And the other day, a shrub nearly stole my shoes. Do you have anything to eat by chance? I have something I could trade. If you would rather go on your way, discard this. Otherwise, uh, I have to do these right now. This is an immediate action here. I can use one energy for one <laughs> and get uh, zero successes. You snatch his satchel before running away. Take two 149 cards, any 131 card. If you want to take the following actions, one involved character must return one card with the keyword provisions. Thank you. I was hungry. I don't have any provisions, I don't think. Otherwise, I'd do that. I'm not snatching his satchel. Seriously? Okay. I'm not playing... Okay, this is a desolate world. It's not exactly the nicest, friendliest place, but I'm not going <laughs> to... Poor guy. I don't want to take his stuff. Okay, so we're just going to... Uh, we would rather go on your way, discard this. Otherwise, I'm not going to do any of these. I'm just going to discard this. I feel super bad. I could take two 149. I'm there are 131 cards. No good. And I don't have a provision, so I can't do this. Oh, look at this, though. I could take a one. 49 card or gain one and take a 49 card. Oh my gosh, it'd be so good. But I do not have, do not have them. We're going to discard that into the past and we're going to put down card number 119. Now at this point, I do have one with the flame symbol, so we do have to take this. The smoke leads you down a plank, walking where a wagon burning out, is burning out. Shadows shift among scattered bodies and chests. So here we are. This is our new card. We do have this burning cart right here. That's pretty interesting. We'll have to check that out. Then look at this. We have a house over here we can check out. And of course, we have to put down a new exploration card over on the side, just kind of out of camera view there. Um, let me make sure there aren't any hidden numbers. I don't think I see anything on there. Of course, I could be completely wrong. Um, now we have to get to it. So I, again, we have gotten some really good cards. There's really nothing I'm going to probably discard here. I think I'm just going to grab a card and move. I'm going to have her do it. She's going to move over there and he's going to join them. So I do have to grab one card from my uh, energy deck and see what we have. We have resolution. I can take two of my flags and turn them into stars. I'm just going to discard resolution. I believe the cards I have are super good because I can always just put that one back in my uh, deck with this second win card if I want to. All right, so we're over here. I'm going to have, this looks like a burning cart. I don't have any way of putting out fire yet, and I don't know if that's a good thing tonight. Uh, maybe I should get some, maybe we should go to the house first. Maybe the house is something nice. Oh, it's Dora. Wow, what do we know? <laughs> we got to go somewhere. It's either a spot observe or a go visit action. Let's go visit somebody. We're going to have Denim go visit. Denim's going to go by herself. Brooks isn't joining. Well, it might be a combat. I better bring Brooks along. All right, we're going to check out 136. Now, it does cost me one card, so Denim does have to use one energy. We'll flip it over. We have found ourselves Savior Energy, which is ironic. I can draw two less cards or four less if this is the only card in your hand, and then I discard this. I wonder if I want to save energy. That might be a bad idea. Now, nah, we're just going to discard this as well. And we'll grab a 136, says the building has resisted time and war. Beneath its spriggy on the sign, you can make out the words, the red spiggy. An abandoned inn, without a doubt, you search uh, from the cellar to the attic without finding anything interesting, but notice several dusty rooms still in favorable condition for traveler. And it says uh, here, you enter the most spacious room, probably the one once occupied by the innkeeper. It has been an eternity since you last slept in a real bed. For the first light of 
of day wakes you from sleep. The involved characters share four life points. Discard this. Well, I haven't lost any life points yet, so I'm not going to do that action yet. We're just going to leave that down there. And now we're going to go check out this. I'm going to have Brooks check this out, but Denim will come with, and he's going to get rid of his blacksmith card here. Uh, if I do any of these actions, I can draw two less cards. Um, nope, we're just going to get rid of that. That's totally fine. And we're going to grab card 134. There is nothing linked to this card. It's just a card. It says right here, uh, a soldier in armor is rummaging through the carcass of the wagon while his two companions are fighting over a barrel. In the chaos of the looting, an unsteady fourth thief says, Hey guys, has anyone seen my sword? The soldier are too busy looting corpses to notice your presence. The element of surprise is on your side. Okay, so this is something we have to do. So we'll have to, we're going to have to take advantage of, we're going to have to do what this card, this is going to be an absolute, this is like a complex action thingy. Now this is a mandatory temporary action. We'll see if we can take advantage of this. I do have to put a three here. Now, when we do these particular actions, we don't have to do this all in one foul swoop. We're able to, if we can get, uh, if we even do just two successes, we'd go down to one. And you're going to keep on going until you get yourself to the very bottom of this card. And then once you've completed all these, then you are going to be successful. We'll banish this and read 34. Um, if we do not get through this one, though, it says banish this and read 63. So we do have, I'd like to hopefully get through all of this. That's hopefully our plan here. Now I do, I only get to draw, I have to, I have to, I'm sorry, have to draw three cards and I, there is no chain on that. So it's not a locked thing. Um, I need three successes. If I get all three successes, I'm going to be able to this do this white uh, outcome here, which would be moving the die down to its next area. And then on top of that, I would have to, I get to put a card in my hand, but I too, take, take two damage. If I do not mark take it all the way down. I'm going to take two damage and I get to put two cards into my hand. So we have to decide who we want to have do this particular action. And then we are going to see what we can do. Since Brooks is built for battle, I'm going to have him take on this guy. He's going to, he's going to use the axe. So why wouldn't you? Um, which means I can either add one to my chain or if I get two of these, I can add them to two successes. Remember, we need three. Oh, don't forget. I got this rock too. I can use the rock. No, we're going to see if the rock, the rock's an auto success. I think we might need that for the next one because next one is a chain. This one's not a chain. So I can actually grab as many cards as I want, but, and use as many as I want for this action. But I think we're going to use the axe anyway. There's a good chance. Hopefully I can get through it. I'm going to use five cards. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to use five cards because I can pull as many as I want. So we're going to use this axe and our five cards. We're going to pull everything back over to where this card is. I do have my axe that I'm going to be able to use, but actually I'm thinking about it more. I don't think I'm going to use the axe. I'm not going to use the axe, but I'm going to keep it here just for demonstration purposes because I haven't really explained how what you do when it comes to taking an action. I've just been pulling cards. When it comes to a lot of things going on in your action, you want to go in the right order. There are four different steps to making an action take place. The first one is your gear up step, and that's when I, the active player is going to choose from among all of their different uh, item cards or any action cards that say use during the gear up step, they have to declare these at this point. So for example, I would have to declare if I want to use the axe, but I, the reason I'm not going to use my axe is because this, I remember I took five cards and I don't have a chain here. So I can use as many of those as I want to try to get my three successes. So I'm not going to use the axe. We're going to hold on to that. I might need that at a later point. And at this point now, well, I'm going to draw. So the active player does have to determine the cost of the action and draws that many cards. So like I said, we have decided to use five cards. This is the amount of cards we've decided to try to get our three successes. At this point, we are going to go to the result step. So the active player is going to then reveal these cards and count these successes and compare them to the total uh, with the actions difficulty. So let's flip these over. Hopefully we got three successes out of here. Now they didn't use all oh, that's only half a success. We got one. Oh, here we go. We're fine. Okay. Yep. We're good. I've got three successes right there. One, two, three. And then we've got some other cards here. The other one, how many got four? <laughs> I got four successes. This guy's super dead. Um, okay. Now I do want to mention that this does have reach one. I didn't talk about that. That means that if the, when, uh, if you do fail the action during the consequence step, a random involved character must discard a card. We did not fail. We were super successful, including this. We got our uh, enhanced pro enhanced projectile. Ooh, that's pretty good. Actually, I've got a plan. Uh, and this one does say I get to keep a card. Uh, a card. So I'm going to keep a card. I'm going to get rid of parry. I'm going to discard my parry card, even though we had it. And I'm going to keep my enhanced protect projectile. That's going to be sweetness because I am allowed to keep a card because we got our three successes, which is going to move our die down to this four. 
and it, but I do have to take two damage, so he's going to go to 18 points of damage here on his little tracker, and we're going to discard all of those cards. All right, now we go to the next one. This one's going to be a lot harder to do. We have three successes this time, and I have to get four successes. And now I can grab up to three, I have to, I have to grab three cards, but I can only ever play three cards in my chain. I can't do any more, but I am going to now activate this ax. This ax is gonna come into play. That's gonna be fantastic. Now I could also activate my projectile if I want to, which I think I'm going to. I'm gonna add my projectile as well, this jagged rock. I can use this during my step because it's projectile and this one's only a weapon secondary. So I can use both of these. Now after I use this, I'm gonna have to discard it, but I think it's gonna be okay. This is gonna give me one success automatically and then I'm gonna be able to grab as many cards as I want and then we can chain only three of them. So I'm gonna grab four cards, one, two, three, four. Let's see how this goes, one, two, three, four. Now before I reveal them, I wanna make sure I'm looking at my cards here and none of them say during the uh, during the preparation phase, or sorry, the, uh, yeah, the, the gear up step. These do not count towards my gear up step. None of these do. So I think we're gonna be okay. We're probably gonna take this guy out. We're probably using too much here, but that's okay. I, I want to make sure we take this guy out. So I've got my cards here. I've got one, two, three. I can only take three cards. Wow, I only got two successes, but I got another one here, three. I've got two hands, so then I can activate my two here, which means I did get enough. So I got one, two, three, then I can use this for four, five, or I can use this. But I didn't get enough of these in my thing. I didn't get any swirlies, so I can't use these swirlies. All right, but I could go another chain, or I could just give myself this and block this card. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in this route. I'm gonna do one, two, three, and then these two symbols here are gonna activate the ax for three, for four, five, which is gonna be enough to drop this again down. We have succeeded. I get to keep one of the cards I drew. This gets discarded into the past. On top of that, I am going to take two damage again, meaning we're going to go from to 16 now. It's kind of like basically another guy hit me from the side while I was taking on another guy. So we got 16. I have to check to see if my ax breaks. My ax is fine. It's gonna go back into my area here. We're gonna discard all these, but again, I get to keep one of these cards if I want to. I think I'm gonna take the deceptive strike and get rid of my uh, projectile card because we kind of threw our thing already. So that thing's done. All right, we'll move down to our last one. This one says that I can only do two cards and I need three uh, successes. Again, Brooks is gonna take this guy out. I'm using him a lot, but that's okay. That's kind of what he's built for. And I use Durnum for a lot of the um, other things that happen in the game. We're again, going to activate our axe. Our axe is going to come into play. Now, I don't know how many more strength icons I have on my cards. I've used quite a bit. Now, I don't have to use any of these cards until the amount of cards are drawn. So I'm going to draw three cards this time and see how we do. The reason I am is because I need three successes, and if all else fails, I've got two successes right there. So let's draw three cards. One, two, three. I can only keep two of these in my chain. Let's see how we do. I've got, oh my gosh, I got two of these. One, and then I'm just gonna use these two. So we're, these are the two, these are the cards I'm gonna use for this chain. And I'm gonna activate this by using the two strength symbols to give myself two. So we've <laughs> rocked this guy, that's three more. He's super dead. Um, I get to, oh, I have to see if my ax breaks this time. Hopefully my ax does not break. My ax got a four, my ax is totally fine. I'll put it back in my inventory. Discard those two cards as well. None of those get to stay. I don't get to uh, keep any of them. I got my three successes, so we're gonna to banish this card and read our number 34 in the uh, in the uh, dialogue book. Now before we read 34, I do want to say I did misspeak when I was talking about this card. It says here that I would banish this and read 63 if I did not succeed in this one. So something different may have happened. Maybe they would have asked like to surrender or something, but instead I just beat them all to a pulp. It says here, the soldiers flee without looking back. One involved character takes a 290 card. There are four 290 cards. First, gonna give them a quick little truffle shuffle here and grab one of them. I know it looked like a mass chaos here. Looks at, look, we have found a padded gabison. Uh, it allows me during a fight action, I can use two wild symbols to give myself one defense selected during the consequence step. Roll a die, roll a one to return this. When you discard or block this, return this. Okay, so this is actually pretty good because I don't have to do it during the gear up step. I can, during the consequence step, roll it. Oh, no, no, I do have to do this during the gear up step. 
I apologize. It's when I'm done with it, if I had selected it during the consequence step, I'd have to roll a die and see if it sticks with me. I'm gonna give this to Brooks. He now has four weight amongst him, which will be just fine, not the end of the world. It says here, you are surprised to find survivors among the remains and debris of the convoy. No doubt they were not a threat to the people who attacked it. You offer your hand to an old woman wearing a ricky, richly embroidered dress. Getting to her feet, she gives you a weary smile. Leave this worried soul. At my age, death is no longer frightening, especially when one has had a life as full as mine. As a little girl, I saw with my own eyes how the burrowers ravaged Waterbank, which we'll learn about soon. I used to sneak into the ruins of the great library to read various cogtesses, especially those about natural history. It was there that I acquired the knowledge that led me to join this convoy. We wanted to reconcile with Kel. They never forgave us for our submission to the Worm Master. So the city-state of Waterbank was not entirely engulfed. She points to a trembling gullet under a broken hitch. This creature, which did nothing but bleat during the crossing of the bottomless sea, is all that remains of the gift that I was supposed to soften Kel. Our chances of success have diminished somewhat, it seems. She sneers. Here, I was able to save this, she says, handing you a book. A little further on, another survivor waves a pleading arm. So at this point, I'm going to gain one knowledge, take a 50 card, a 102 card, and one 99 card, and then read 24. Our knowledge goes to three. I'm getting super knowledgeable, man. This is pretty good. I'm more knowledgeable than about anything else I got. So I, gotta, I go up to three on this. Also, we get a 50 card, and there's a lot of 50 cards here. Let's first give it a quick little truffle shuffle. Here, let's grab one. We'll grab the top one. That'll be fine. We have found ourselves a defraction spell. This old grimgore, grimoire contains a spell that tricks others into seeing your silhouette a few inches away from where it really is. During the result step of the following action, I can uh, use one of these symbols to give myself an extra in the chain. Uh, I have no idea what that symbol is. I have never seen that before. But lucky for us, on the back of our book here, it shows us what all of them are. <laughs> so let's see if we can find it here. Oh, cast a spell. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> it's a spell card, spell book. So whenever I cast a spell uh, with a chain of one and I get three successes, I get to add one card to my hand and take a 53 card, which you may immediately give to a character on your terrain card. If it is not available, the spell does not work. Okay, so I'm going to guess this is some kind of invisibility spell or like a duplication spell of some kind or maybe a differaction spell, maybe, because it says right on the top of the card. That's awesome. I'm going to put that into our green journal that we have so that we now are going to be able to put that with our plant here. So what I do is I just flip this page over, slide it in on the side here, and now we have two different 50 cards that are joined into our journal here, which is, I really think this is a cool thing. On top of that, I get a 99 card, which is a Hope Reborn. We'll put that with our quests. And we get card 102, and 102 is objective. For the needs of a certain scenario, consider this to be objective number two. I don't know if this is going to be needed for this one, but we have objective two. I'll put that into my quest items. And with all of that taken in place, I am going to have Denim move back up there. She's going to use one energy to move back to this inn. And we've got ourselves Inspiration here. I can choose one card in your action deck or discard pile, add it to your hand and, or discard. Oh, I want that. I want that a lot. I'm going to get rid of Spare No Effort. And that way I can keep that one in my hand and I can use that to grab some cool cards out of my discard pile. This person's coming with, by the way, I'm not gonna do that alone. And at this point, I can enter this and use this, it's for zero. The first light of the day wakes you from sleep. The involved characters share four life points, discard this. I am gonna give all four life points to him. He's gonna go back to 20 so that we are super happy and healthy. There we go. Then I have to discard this, I think it says. Yep, discard this. I'll put that into the past, it is gone. On. And at that point, that's the end of that. And it is now time to move on. I'm going to have Denim go right here, but of course I'll have Brooks helping her as well. We're going east again. We're continuing east. It says, a man is leaning against a rock, snoring loudly, a open book on his round belly. What carelessness. Books are so rare. If you'd rather go on you, your way, banish this. If you give into temptation of stealing the book... 
if one involved character has a card with the keyword criminal on it. I don't think I have any criminal cards here. So it means it's going to cost me two and have to have two successes. I can snatch the book and take a 50. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have bad news. This guy's going to probably be real pissed at me. Oh boy, I have to decide if we really want to go for this or not. We're going to have Brooks do it. Why not? Let's grab a... <laughs> Let's grab this guy's book. Uh, it, the sad thing is now I have to, I, can, I can pull two or more cards, but I do need two successes in order to do it. The problem is uh, he the, he's got he's been using a lot of cards now, and I but he's the only one that has cards that are allowing him to do chains and things like that that can add to his chain value. The other person does not have that, so I'm actually going to grab three cards. We're going to not add. We're not going to gear up for this particular thing. I don't have anything that's going to really help me. Instead, I'm just going to grab three cards. We're going to reveal our three cards and see what we get. We have two plus here. I've got one, two. I need two. I got two right there. Two. Boom. Done. This one. I could, oh, wow. Look at this. I got three. Oh my gosh. I'm so good at this game. All right. We got three. We got more than we needed for this. So I'm going to be able to snatch the book and stealthily disappear. You are already a good ways away when you the snoring stops and a stream of swear words begin. Now, I would have banished this either way up here, so this is why I don't feel too bad taking his book, because if you'd rather go on your way, I can banish this. It means it's never coming back. So I'm gonna take a 50 card and put that into the banish card section. Now, like I said, there's a million 50 cards, so we're just gonna reach in and grab one. It says you leaf through the book and you have found what I found. Migrainers. What? A chapter refers to migrainers, also called alchemist coral which can be found in the bottomless sea. When it is not uh, immersed in water, it releases a lufiv that can disorientate and cause serious headaches, okay? There's a chapter on how to avoid this. Unfortunately, someone must have spilled a cup of wine on the book because the rest of the text is obscured by a purplish stain that makes it impossible. Barf to read. Immediately after this is revealed, I gain one knowledge. If there's ever coral on the board, when the, this coral can be seen on your train card, ignore the movement penalties that have to go along with it. All right, that's kind of good. I guess that helps a little bit. So again, we'll place this into our journal and we have that available for us to use as we go through. I'm gonna place down card number 128. It states, at the bottom of the steep hills, a patch goes down to a rocky scree and that obstructs the passage. Great, let's see what it says here. Okay, we've got multiple things we can do here. Now again, I don't think I see any numbers. There could be numbers on the rocks, but I don't see anything. Um, I didn't look on this card very well, did I? I think I did. All right, so we're gonna put down some of these particular uh, exploration cards. And as you notice, I've come to the end, so I'm gonna kind of move everything over. But before I do, I get to mark an extra knowledge on here, so we now have four. And now we're gonna place down some exploration cards for three and two. We don't have any twos out there yet, so again, give them a nice little truffle shuffle here so that they're all set to go. And we'll just draw the top card, put it down. We got a two down here, which looks like more of a foresty area. I don't know what three is, it's over there. We already had a couple, we had one three placed already. Uh, there's a two and a three. We're gonna to have to move over here. I'm gonna have Denim do it because Denim has way more cards than the other character does. Uh, before I do that, let's see if there's something I can do. I think I think I am gonna use my second wind card for her, which allows her to choose up to three cards in your discard pile and shuffle them back into your action deck and block this. There are only three cards in my discard pile. I'm gonna block this back there. I'm just gonna slide it back there. We're gonna take the three, shuffle them into this deck right here. The reason I'm doing it is because it opens up a spot in my hand for when I move. I'm allowed to put a card into my hand, so this way I can put one into my hand. We're just gonna place this right in my hand because I might as well. It says vigilance. During any action, I can give myself two, uh, what do you call it? Wilds can turn into two health, or two defense, I should say, which is super cool. But there we go. She's going to move over the tile. And having moved over, Brooks is going to move over for free. At this point, we can look at something. I'm going to have Denim check out this area over here. It says to pull a 140 card. 
This card states, it is a fire card, so it has to do with this particular mission. If you have at least one objective card, flip this, otherwise return this. I do have an objective card. It says, for need of certain scenarios, consider this to be objective two, so I do have an objective card. So I am gonna flip this card. It states here, you start looking for possible survivors of the attack on the convoy, going to higher ground to get better look when down into the gorge you find anyone hiding there. You could swear you heard voices. Dis uh, discretion is needed. If you are spotted, you will never find out who the voices belong to. Oof da. Okay. We're going to have to do all of this. This is going to be all sneaky, sneaky. Let's see if we can do this comp compound action here as sneaky, sneaky. Now, good news, this card is just going to go sit up here. So I don't actually have to do this right now if I don't want to. But I think it's going to be best if we do. We'll put a die on three. This should be pretty fun. Let's see how we do this. Okay. Before we make our, before we do our check, I'm going to play this card. I'm going to have Denim do the first one. Uh, the first one costs zero energy and I need three successes. There isn't a chain on it at all. So this is going to be a little more up her alley. I'm going to use this to choose a card in my action deck or discard pile, add it to my hand and then discard this. We're going to discard that card and grab a perseverance card, which gives us a success or an add to the chain, which is going to be super good. All right. Now, I'm going to grab, I think we're going to grab four cards. One, two, three, four, to try to get three successes with her. I'm not going to gear up anything. We're just going to hope that we can. Now, remember, I can use all of these cards. There's not a chain on this, so I can use all these cards. We got, oh, that's no good. We got half star, that's no good. We got, this one's really good. Oh, look at this. Okay, I think we're good. I got one, two, three. Just barely, though. Look at that. <laughs> None of the other cards lined up. One, two, three. Well, three is what we need, so that means we're going to move our die down. Again, I need three again. These are all going to go in the discard pile. I don't get to keep any of those. This one now, I need three successes, but I have a chain of two, which means I'm only able to keep two cards. I don't want to use Brooks, but I think we're going to have to. Brooks is going to grab three cards, and he's going to, he's not going to use anything for his gear up step because he doesn't have anything, but he's got a lot of things that add to chains or give him successes, so hopefully this will be enough to be able to keep him going. Now, I think I might draw one more card, but before I can do that, I have to restore my character. We are playing on normal mode, so that means uh, for every two or every life point I use, I get two cards put back into my action deck. Right now, my action deck has three, so I'm going to have to get rid of I'm going to go with ten. Hopefully, that's enough, which means I can put 20 cards in. Hopefully, there's 20 cards here. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to shuffle these up. It's random. Random 20 cards. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's actually only 8. I only have to lose 8 health to put all these back in here. Uh, 8 times 2 is 16. So it's uh, we need to put 8 health. So I'm actually going to get 2 back, which is going to be pretty good. But now I get to put all those cards into our action deck here. I get an 8, so that means I only get 2 points back here. That's half the battle. And there we go. I got 2 now. We're going to draw 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 cards to see if we succeed in the next action. Like I said, we did not do a gear up step, so we're going to just check and see what we got. We got one. Now, I only get to keep two of these. Okay, here we go. We got two. One, two. I only get to keep those two. Actually, I can keep any of these to give myself two stars. <laughs> now, what I can do is I can use this to give me my third card by putting another chain in the... in the, uh, Give myself another one in the chain, which is what we're going to do. So, I'm going to discard improvise to allow myself to add one to the chain. So, now I can add do three cards, which means I'm going to do one, two, three. doesn't matter which ones I do, honestly. They're all going to be... I could do these three. That'd be great. I could do it, whatever. So, you get the idea. <laughs> we passed. I'll put those in the discard pile. Now, this goes down here. Now, look at this. I've got a chain value of one one and I have to have one success and I have to draw at least one card. Now if I re if I'm successful I get to banish this and read 28. Otherwise I'm returning this, which means that I was not sneaky enough to get all the way up here. So at this point, going all the way down here, I want to make sure we can take care of this. So I want to I'm gonna have Denim do it. Denim's only gonna draw one card. And the reason why is because I have this. I'm probably just gonna use that card to get my success. But let's flip this over. We might get our success. We did not. So we're gonna discard that I got zero successes from the card, but I'm going to discard this so I can gain a success and then block this. So again, we'll just slide this into the back there to block the card. With that last success done, I am going to read number 28. As you feel your way to where the voices were coming from, a man with a large stick stands in front of you, shielding the, a little girl behind him with his body. He swings the stick clumsily. One more step and I'll crack your skull. Don't even think of coming near the girl. You have nothing to fear. 
I saw what happened to your convoy. I can help you. Help us how? Those scum took everything from us. Everything. The livestock is gone and my investment with it. I'm ruined. He tightens his grip on the weapon and growls. You will not take away what I hold most dear. Precisely. Join our community. Since the reversal, we've been trying to rebuild our lives. The man hesitant, hesitant bends down so that his ward can whisper a few words in his ear. She rummages in a thorn bush and pulls out an object. The girl wants to give you this. She likes you. I wonder why. So I'll do it for her, but no tricks, right? I get a 103, a 149, and a 99 card and return the dialogue book. We'll start with a 99 card. It's just going to be a Hope Reborn card. We'll put that into our quest items. We also are going to gain a 149 card. There are a lot of 149 cards here. <laughs> so we're just going to shuffle them up. I'm sure this is some kind of item of some kind. We'll shuffle these up. Or maybe it's a blessing or something. We got 149. We found a flute. That's awesome. A small metal musical instrument. A flute doesn't do any... Oh, it's a barter. Okay, remember when I could have bartered with somebody? There we go. I got a barter item. I'm going to give that to Denim. Then I'm gets a barter item. Fantastic. It costs, it's no weight, so it doesn't weigh anything. And the last thing we get is a 103 card. The 103 card is objective. You For the needs of certain scenarios, consider this to be objective number three. All right, we'll put that into our quest pile as well. We have objective number two, and we have objective number three. I'm going to discard this into the past. I don't think we need that card anymore. And then I have to decide which way to go. Well, we're going east, right? That's the plan. We're going to have Denim go east. By, well, I'll have him come with, but I don't think it really matter. We're going to see what this is. It does say if you, oh, this is going to cost us seven. Seven to go that way. If your ground shiver is level five or higher. Okay, we're maybe not going to go that way. Who oh, no, maybe we'll go south. I think south's better. Look, this one says if your ground shiver is level three or higher. Oh, I like that. <laughs> this costs nothing. This would have costed us seven cards. I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark. That's the wrong way to go. Um, I, I, I could be completely wrong, but it looks pretty awesome. And if that's the way, I really appreciate the fact that they do that. Instead of having us randomly in the center of the continent, sometimes you could kind of have, oh, I don't know, an entire hour and a half to two hour playthrough of going the wrong direction like I did during my seventh continent playthrough. It was super cool. I went up north and saw some neat uh, snow things, but it had nothing to do with the quest we were on or the curse. So if you ever watch my playthrough, that, that happened. This way, uh, it's kind of neat that if I, if I have a ground shiver of five or higher, that might be later in the game for a different quest where we might actually go this direction. Now, I could be wrong. That could be the way we're supposed to go, and I just have to take the seven cards, but it sounds brutal. I'm going to go this way instead. So we're going to have Denim go that way with Brooks helping. We're going to head down here. We have found a piece of Almbeck. A massive silhouette darts in your direction, making quick, quite a racket. Immediately after this is revealed, put a piece of Almbeck figure into play on your terrain card and take a 574 card. This is the piece of Almbeck. And then it says here, during the consequence step, put this piece of Alambek figure into play on your train card or move it to your train card. If you choose to discard this, return the corresponding piece of Alambek. Okay. The maximum number of cards in you may have in your hand is decreased by one. I must be in order to carry this thing. All right. Let's take, let's, let's do all of this. So we'll place this onto our terrain card. This is a little uh, Alambuck. This is actually one of the expansions. So this is an expansion card. This is kind of cool. I'm going to take a 574 card. Our card here says, like most of the inhabitants of the collapsing lands, you have heard about this strange creature. You know now know that it is not just a legend. A long time ago, a famous alchemist settled in a remote area near Valengard to conduct his experiments in secret. When he died, his tower, left to decay, gradually fell into ruin. People said that after every storm, animals from the nearby forest come to drink from its base without anyone knowing why. The rumor reached the ears of a passing nobleman who, in order to unravel this mystery, went to this forgotten place and drank the rainwater. On the back here, it says Alambek Pieces. No one knows what happened, but the individual spent most of his fortune to pull down the tower and recover a jumble of useless parts. 
gutters, cauldrons, and other scrap metal. He asked an in worker, iron worker to assemble them according to a precise blueprint. Thus was born the Alembec of Valengard, whose reputation quickly spread from Gyaborg to Stoneheap. Many cycles later, when an emissary of the Worm Master demanded the submission of Valengard, the city hastened to ask Necrodrood Ninadazar to protect its famous Alembec. He equipped it with, a, with root legs, which moved it to a safe and secret place. And here you are in front of one of the pieces of the famous Alembec Valengard. When all three pieces of Alembec figures are on your train card, take a 444 and banish this. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but all right, we'll put this into our quest pile here. Now I have to figure out exactly how this is all going to work. Now this goes into our items here, a piece of Alembec. So I can carry this along with me, and I believe I can carry this, I guess, forever. I could probably keep it back at the place, maybe even. I don't know. Let's see how this all works. Okay, so we've read the card. We have a piece of Alembec. During the consequence step, put this piece of Alembec figure into play on your train card or move it to your train. Okay. Uh, during the consequence step, put this... What consequence step? We don't have, oh, okay, whatever. When we move, okay. Uh, during the consequence step, put this piece of Alembec figure into play on your train card or move it to your train. Got it. The maximum number of cards you may have in your hand is decreased. If you choose to discard this, return the corresponding piece of Alembec figure as well. All right, well, you know what? I'm going to have, I'm going to have Denim take this. Denim's going to have that little quest going on, or item, I should say. It's an item. And whenever we move, this thing is going to move along with us from how I understand that card. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments below. We're going to take a 147 and continue our adventure. This one says, The waves of the great sea lick the foot of the plateau where you where a thicket of dangerous-looking vegetation proliferates. Let's take a look at the card. Let's see if there's any magic numbers in anywhere. I do not see any magic numbers anywhere. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, no, nothing. Okay, Ooh, I can go hear something, or I can go look over here. All right, let's put that down here, and then I've got to grab a five. Wow, I'm, lots of different train cards coming out. We'll give these a quick little truffle shuffle here, just because it's the first time we've used these. Uh, there we go, put one right there. Perfect, we got the five terrain now. This one says it's seven again. If your ground shiver is level five or higher, then flip this. So mine's not, mine's three. Three, three, this is a seven, seven. Then there's seven back there. Other than that, I don't really... I don't really know what else we can do here. Well, I guess we're going to travel down here. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to have Denim move down. She's going to grab a card from her from her pile her, and see what she's got. Determination. You may discard this during a gear up step to apply the following results, either a wild symbol or a uh, success. Now, because that Alembec is with us, I can only ever carry two cards, and she's got Vigilance right now, which I don't think I'm ever going to use. So I'm going to keep this one, and I'm going to keep Determination, but we're going to discard this one, and I believe it says this Alembec moves with us. During the consequence step, put this Alembec on your card, so I believe it comes with us. This one is going, he's going to move for free, uh, just because I can. And then we can either go listen, or we can spot C, I think is what that is. Spot, observe, spot C, very similar. And then we have the listen one here, so I think we're going to listen. I'm going to have her go and listen for 110. Let's see what we can hear. There are three of these 110 cards, so we're going to give them a little truffle shuffle here. It's going to mix them up a little bit, just like that. There we go. No idea what's on there. But boom, boom, we'll shuffle, and we'll take this one. It says, an oppressive silence hangs over the area as if all life has fled or perished. And on the other side, we have discard all 110 cards from the adventure deck without revealing them. All right, we've got the other two cards here. I'm just going to put them away. Next, I've got a think action. Uh, for zero cards, I need one success or one with one success if the involved character has a card of the word weakness. No, we do not. If you do not give into despondency, uh, regaining your freedom after cycles of captivity has taught you that nothing is ever hopeless. Take 149 card or return three Glimmer of Hope cards uh, to take a 99 card, okay? Otherwise, the fight seems odd. Okay, so discard. Okay, I'm going to do this. Let's see what we do. I am I need to... Oh God, we're going to have her do it. That's fantastic. I only get to keep one card, and I'm going to draw only one card, I think. I think that's what we're going to do. And before I do that, I'm just going to play both my cards. We're just going to do this and make it happen. I'm going to use this one that says... 
Uh, you may apply the following effect during an action you are involved in, even if you're not the active player. One involved character gets a wild or ignore the draw cards. Discard this. I'm going to ignore the draw the one. I don't have to draw any cards. That's fantastic. I'm not going to draw any cards. I'm just going to play this. One success, done. This one says uh, I get the following effect. I either get a success or I get a wild. I'm going to play that during my gear up step. I've got my one success, which means we have smashed this. So I can take a 49 card or I can return three glimmers of hope, which I have. I have three glimmers of hope. I can return three of those to gain a 99 card. We're going to put that into the past. So I get a 99 card. Awesome. So now we have three Hope Reborn cards, which is awesome. That's those, those experience cards. And now that we're done with that action, I'm going to head down over here. Now this one, if you notice, I do need a success, but I can draw zero cards. I'm just going to draw two cards. There is no failure here. So it doesn't matter if I fail or not. I can just keep trying this. So we're going to have her try this. Denim's going to try this. She got half a star. And hopefully that's another half a star over here. Oh, there's a full star. All right. We've, we got the success we needed in order to do this action down here. This is going to be our Spot Observe, I believe is what they call this one. And I'm going to check out card 158. Hopefully this is going to explore some of this stuff over here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go somewhere. I have to discard seven cards. Good news, I found a card that has a <laughs> flame symbol. It says, footprints are visible in the sandy ground. Two individuals are ahead of you, one of whom has lost a shoe. If you have at least one objective card, flip this, otherwise return this. We have two objective cards. I can flip this. Let's see what it says here. You follow them to the great sea, which is very rough. You observe something being tossed by the waves. It suddenly comes to life. Then nothing. Maybe someone is drowning, unless it is some kind of seabird. All right, we have two different... Oh, this is another compound action that we have to do right now with our group. Okay, uh, it's a nautical one. I've got so many things that are going to help with that. Nothing. Okay, let's see here. Burr, the water is freezing. You are not going to risk your life for the sake of a stranger. Banish this. Okay, so I need five successes. Barf. Okay, banish this and read 39. Otherwise, it says fatigue is setting in. You are not going to continue for, towards the open sea or go back to shore. They get three cards and you, can, and you may choose to banish this. Okay, so I actually have to get these five successes right off the bat here or we have bad news city. So for a gear up step, I'm doing nothing because I don't have anything. I have to put, I have to put a die on this. This is a... Uh, action here that involves five. All right, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab five cards. Now, the good news is I get to keep two of them. And I also have, I'm going to have Brooks do this because he still has two of those cards that are going to give him auto successes uh, as we go forward here. So I'm going to, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm ever going to do the bottom part though. Look at this. I have to have, I can only keep one card and I get five successes I need. Five successes? That's ridiculous. That's never going to happen. Unless I have something that can help me do this. I don't think I have anything I know to do this. Really? How are we ever supposed to do that? Oh, I better better get these five successes. I better take one more card because I can't afford to use the two auto successes. I'm going to have to save those for this one down here. All right. Let's see what we get. We've gotten hopefully enough here. I got half a six. Well, there's one, one star right there. One. Oh, we got two right here. Two. Then we get three. We got one, two. Oh, boy. We got one. Oh, boy. We might not make this. One, two, three, four, five. Just barely. Look at this. Four, five. We got five successes. One, two, three, four, five. Another half success. Now, I don't get to keep any of these cards. Oh, I do. I get to keep two cards, according to this. Two cards I can keep. That'll be hopefully pretty good. Looking through all those cards, I'm not going to keep any of them. I don't think there's anything I want to keep. Now we go down to the next one where I can only keep one. I feel like this is going to be a mute point. I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to get five. Oh, wait. This is going to hopefully this can keep on dropping. This one just says burr the water banishes. This one, the fatigue is setting in. You're going to continue forward to the open sea or go back to shore. Discard three cards and you may choose to banish. So I think I can keep on going with this. It's not like this. Remember, these dice, dice I think, continue ticking down. I could be wrong. Please let me know in the comments below if I do this wrong. But I believe that this, this one, if I failed, would have automatically banished this. That's the deal. But with this one, it says the fatigue is setting in. You are going to continue there. You are going to continue forward. The open, the open sea or go back to shore. Discard three cards and you may choose to banish this. So I, I can choose to banish this or I can again try again and see how I do. So I'm going to I'm going to try this. We'll see how this goes. But remember, every time I fail, I'm going to have to discard three cards. 
Brooks is the only one that can do this. He's the only one that has those success cards in his hand. He's going to draw three cards, hopefully get a few successes out of these. I think it's going to take a couple times to get through because I'm only able to keep one of these. So I'm going to have to hopefully keep drawing these until I can get cards that have a full success on them. I don't have any other way of doing this. And now the thing is, is this something I need to be doing? Honestly, I can't find anything else on these maps that I would need to do unless it's way back at the beginning that I should have done. So I'm really thinking I'm this is might be the end of this whole thing because there's this is such a tough test and I can't go in this direction without paying a lot of cards. So we're gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna banish, I'm gonna use three cards here. I'm not gonna do anything for my gear up step. We're just gonna give this a shot. Okay, let's see, hopefully I get a card without. I got one success. All right, we'll keep this as my card. So we got one success, two success, three success. There's three successes, we go down to two. So we only have two left to do. So we're gonna get rid of these cards right here. This one is gonna go back into my, it's, it doesn't get banished. It's just a temporary card. So this one goes into my past. This one is a success, block this. We're gonna slide that into our thing. And then before I do anything too crazy here, I got my one success. The other ones wouldn't have helped. I was thinking I could remember I could chain things too, but this one is gonna give me my one success. That's three. I do have to discard three cards because of this. So one, two, three discards. One, two, th oh no, look at that. There's a success, Marf. <laughs> I need those successes. Okay, that he's that's the, that was his attempt. I don't have any other cards that are going to give me bonuses to this, so I think it's time that we have Denim do it. Denim's going to draw three cards. She needs to get some successes here. Let's see how many she gets. Hopefully a few. She got one. We're going to keep this as our one card, which is going to drop this down to one success. I'm then going to discard that card and one, two, three cards. We're going to discard three cards. Hopefully, oh no, look at this. That's success on that one too. Yuck. All right. She's going to do this again. She's going to grab three cards again. One, two, three. That actually runs her out of her action deck, which is totally fine. I need one success on any of these cards. Nope. Nope. Oh, barf. Okay, none of these are going to help. Uh, I didn't pass this at all. I don't think of anything here. This one, what's this able to do? Uh, involved character gains a question mark. Barf. Okay, that's not going to help. So we have to discard those three cards. I am out of cards. We have to restore her as well now. So at this point, I am again going to tick down 10 to go to 10 health here. If I And I'm going to grab 20 cards. If I did with the other person, if, this, that, if that doesn't happen and I can do this for less, then I'll give myself some health back. But we're going to grab 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I am going to keep one in my discard. We're going to keep this one. So that means we have 18, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I have 20. Uh, how did I count that wrong? All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What? Am I counting wrong? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's going to cost me 9 health. So we're at 11. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so counting's awesome. We're going to go to 11. That was unbelievable. All right, she's going to continue the action, though. I'm going to grab three cards again. Hope that we get one star. All we need is one star. We got no star, no star, one star. Oh, boom, those all go in my discard pile, and we were 16. successful. yay! So <laughs> then we got rid of the last success uh, for our compound action here. I'm going to banish this and read card 39. You are right, a man was indeed drowning. You reach him and wrap one arm around his chest, pulling his body against. The current drains all your energy. You slump down in the sand beside him, just long enough to catch your breath. The young man hiccups and spits out some water. He slowly comes to his senses before sitting up. The horns chased us after the soldiers' attack. To think that we were only a day or two away from Kel, our destination. Saluan and I managed to escape while they set fire to the wagons, but their horns were on our trail. He, he puts his head in his hands. That cursed barking, it still echoes in my head. We had no choice but to throw ourselves into the water. My brother was exhausted. I kept telling him, hang in there, Selwyn. They tr they'll, they'll get tired. But he panicked. He used up his last of his strength. There was nothing I could do. He begins to sob. Come to the Citadel. Our community will welcome you. Only if I can avenge my brother. 
At this point, we'll take card 104, a 01 card, and a 99 card and return to the dialogue book. And we'll grab our 99 card, which is just another one of those Hope Reborn cards, which is awesome. We'll grab a 01 card. It says, you are barely able to stand and would not mind resting for a few hours on a straw mattress, no matter how dirty it is. I am, I am exhausted. Here we go. <laughs> You immediately, after this is revealed, you if you were already exhausted, take negative six cards and return this. I can use this action to return this. Um, I can take this action and a four for four cards, I, I can return this. All right, um, so I'm exhausted. If I get exhausted again, then I'm gonna have to take six cards. This is gonna go to Denim because Denim was the last one who did that, I believe. Um, I don't think both of us get that. I could be wrong because it didn't say each involved character. So I'm not sure if I did that, if they're supposed to both get that or not. Let me know in the comments below if I did that wrong. 104, this is the other card we got. This one is objective. For the need, for the needs of several scenarios, consider this to be objective four. Okay, I think, I think I'm starting to get the hang of these. 104, I think there's also a 102, 103, yeah. Okay, so that's pretty funny. The objective cards are based on the 100 and O's. So this is 102, 103, and 104. Okay, so going forward, if I ever need to figure out that, I totally can. <laughs> I think that's about all we need to do. Now, of course, this doesn't tell you, hey, congratulations, you won. You solved it. We have to get back to the Citadel and hope that that was what we were supposed to do. Remember, we were supposed to check out the flaming thing we did. It was this caravan. Um, I don't want to go this way. That's going to cost us a ton of cards. The only other places we could go is potentially up in these directions. And we might do that. Let's go back, see how much energy we have by the time we get back. And maybe we can explore a couple of these and just see what happens and see if those are just a wild goose chase and don't help us at all. Or if that could potentially have something we might want. So at this point, I am going to have her go forward up here. He's going to join. And I'm going to use one card to move. I'm going to grab a card. I've got Jack of all trades. I will keep that because I only have one card in my hand. He will come for free. Now he's going to move over here and use one card. He's going to grab Jack of all trades. That's absolutely hilarious. Then he's going to put that to his hand because he only has two cards in his hand. She's going to come back over here for free. And then all this is I'm going to eventually slide this all over because I'm going to have to expose all this part again. So after getting everything back in order here, we're gonna continue our jaunt. I am going to move one with her. She'll take a card. I don't get to keep it because I can only carry two cards with this guy. So this one is intuition. Look at the top three cards of your action deck, put them in back and, and either top or bottom in any order. That sounds pretty good. I'm gonna do that, I think. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna do that instead of fortitude. I'm gonna get rid of this fortitude card to keep that card. And then I'm gonna use intuition here. And I'm gonna look at the top three cards of my deck and put them back in any order. One, two, three. We have these three cards. So now the reason I'm doing this is because now I can tell next time I do an action, what I'm gonna have available to me. Choose one card from in your action deck or discard pile out of your hand. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna put them in that order and we know that coming forward down when we have to do a, a test i have three stars coming forward now if i ever have to do move once i'm gonna have one star that does actually mean that he is going to take the next movement giving him he's gonna have to draw a card he has found himself a savior energy card which means i can draw one less card and discard one card from my hand um, I'm going to just discard that card for now. And then she's going to follow over here with her little creature here. Uh, and I believe that I'm now going to check out these two cards and see what they are. I'm going to have her check this card out. And remember, she does have three successes sitting on the top three cards of her deck. It says here, you are preoccupied with your ground shiver. Its petals keep opening and closing. I can cast a spell. Everything seems to be in or uh, in order for the time being. I can either do a cast a spell or I can do a uh, try to help this thing, I guess. I don't see why I don't have to cast a spell. Do I have to have an item to be able to cast a spell? I don't know. Or do I just cast a spell? I can just cast a spell action. I guess these characters can cast spells. Or, yeah, why don't we do that? I can draw zero cards. I need one success. I'm going to draw one card. And you know what? It's a success. Pow! The mad inspiration. I'm going to grab that card. I'm going to keep that card. Uh, and that's it. I'm going to put this into the past and I'm going to put card 108 down here. 
108 states, the path winds between two hilly areas colonized by what is probably hostile flora. Arriving from the east, you hear the echo of the surf on the salty air. The great sea has expanded, finally earning its name that the Kellians gave it out of pride. All right, I'll put that down. And then again, I have a card for number two to place down, which is if I have a ground shiver of three or less, I'm able to uh, go here. I'm just going to put that right there. I don't think this is going to be someplace we want to go. I don't see anything that could be part of the scenario we're doing right now, but let's check up here. We're going to have her go this way as well and see what she finds. I remember my top two cards are going to give me two successes. This one says, the petals of your ground shiver fine, close suddenly, singing lane. If the base of your character's figure is, uh, contain, is in contact with the singing lane, take a 49 card. Here is the singing lane. Uh, otherwise, tr a tracker burrower appears from underground. If you choose to run away, negative four cards and take a zero one. If you choose to fight, take a 173 card. If your ground shivers level five or higher, or uh, if I were higher, or a 172 card if it is not. During the fight that ensures, consider the fight action to have the ambush trait, okay? I believe this top part activates. If this base of your character's figure is in contact with, a, with the singing lane, take a 49 card. So uh, we have it right here. So we're gonna take a 49 card. I believe that's gonna be our plan. So I'm gonna put that in the past and take a 49 card. Okay, and then let's see here. Where is the 49 cards? Right, oh, that's gonna be one of those uh, stroke of luck cards or whatever that we get. That's gonna be this one right here. I've got a glimmer of hope. That's what it's called, glimmer of hope. That's it. I'm going to then put card number 86 out on the map. Super glad we had our road here. That was awesome. And it says, the mountain rises to the west of a wide crevasse. It is the first of an impassable chain, the name of which escapes you. Boulders the size of houses have broken from its slopes and tumbled down. You distinguish the cave in the rocky face. Let's see what we got here. Uh, again, I don't think any of this is going to help us out. I get to put a three card, which is already out over here. And that's one where you have to pay a ton to go to. So again, don't think there's much there for us. Let's move this way. Well, I got a lot of health left. So I could go and check out some of these places. I think it's just best to get back. I, mean, I don't think, all right, I'm just gonna get back. We're done. I'm gonna send this guy. She's gonna spend one card, boom, done. One card, psh, don't care. She's gonna come with, boom, everything comes with. We are gonna head back into here for zero. We're all gonna head back in and that's gonna call it a day. I think we did everything we could on this. I don't think I need to be, because we're just supposed to go east and check out the fire, we did. And then we explored a little bit about the fire and that's about it. Um, like I said, we could go up, and, but it didn't necessarily go north or south and I believe that this is probably gonna be for other quests. That's my guess. So we are going to finish this. We are going to open the epilogue book or the book where the bookmark is and read the epilogue to end the scenario. It does say if you have at least one objective card, read conclusion A on page four. We do, we have I think three. Otherwise read conclusion B on page five. As the camp takes shape in the protective shadow of the citadel, you see some children running to meet you. They grab your clothes, pull you and push you, try to make themselves understood with chaotic gestures and rambling sentences. The adults freeze at your approach and observe you, their eyes dark, jaws clenched. You tell the community that the convoy from Waterbank, oh, Waterbank, I think I forgot to read that to you. So I'm going to read that after we're done here, was attacked not far from the Citadel and that the few survivors should be joining the camp soon. I fought some of the attackers who were looting the convoy, seasoned soldiers. Your gaze drifts to the palisade that protects the camp made of stakes and a desperate pile of rocks and scraps. This makeshift protection will offer little in case of a real attack. As if in response to your fears, a small group calls out to you. We need to talk to you. We have bad news. Waterbank, a city-state located north of the bottomless sea, which hosted a lar the largest library in the Protectorate. It became infamous when it decided to submit to the Worm Master, a betrayal that the Protectorate has never forgiven, and for which it would have paid dearly if Kel had not already been greatly diminished after 
decades of conflict. At this point, we have this part that says state of play. Survivor from the convoy, you managed to save at least one victim of the attack on the waterbank convoy and to have them join your community. I get to take a 99 card, then I can return all objective cards, applying the following effect for each objective card you return corresponding to one of several survivors of the attack who joined the Citadel. Plus one, I get to choose which one of these I want to gain. So I have three of these uh, objective cards. So this is going to be where I am going to enlist you. You are going to tell me what three things we should use. Should I add more to my production, more to my uh, knowledge, more to my defense, or more to my influence? I'll let you decide. Of course, I'll show you our magic book. Here's where we stand during, uh, at the time right now. We have four production, two defense, four knowledge, and two influence. I could use the three to gain two more into my defense, which it asks, and one more into influence, or I could pump them all into knowledge. Uh, I'd like to hear what you think coming, moving forward in this game. What do you think we should do with these? All right, those are, that's one thing we have to do. Then it says, ready to set off again. Each player discards all of their cards in hand. If you have finished the scenario, no smoke without fire. If you want to begin the next scenario immediately, I'm going to, we're not going to. I am going to save my adventure here, and we are going to start our next play in the next video. I also get a 99 card, so we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 99 cards that we can use to level up our community. So again, wouldn't mind hearing what you have to say when it comes to what we should do for our destiny track. Here it is as we stand. We have kind of gone up this path. I could keep going with my 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and maybe get to this 3 or 1, or I could just kind of start off in another direction. If Maybe somebody might think that, hey, you don't have any reflex cards. They're really good. Or keep on building up your civilization. So going down these paths here, just uh, it, delving into each one of these might be a way. Or should we try to get to one of these numbers out here, which could be super cool. So let me know what you think I should do with my five uh, Hope Reborn cards. So there you have it. We were able to complete the first chapter out of our threat. It was the uh, no smoke without fire. We made it back. I don't know if we made it back ever. And you know, I have to admit, we never found objective one. So objective one might have been off to the north or south from these areas. But, you know, three, I think is pretty good. We got three of the objectives. I think that's pretty great. I don't know, of course, where objective one was. And, you know, I'll have to maybe play again to find out. If you did enjoy the playthrough, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you know when more Seventh Citadel comes out. My goal is to completely play through this threat, and I hope you're excited to join me on this endeavor. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. Have you had a chance to try this uh, threat, and is it a lot of, have you enjoyed it? Have you had a chance to try the drums threat, and are you enjoying that one? If you are interested in seeing a playthrough of the drums threat, can Derek over at Kanji Studios, is that's the threat he is doing. I'll put a link to his channel in the description of this video, or I might just put a link to that video where he starts that particular threat that you can check out. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out the link to the Patreon. It is found in the description of this video. Those that have joined the Patreon already are shown here on the screen. Thank you so much for your patronage. It does mean the world to me. Going forward, some of the perks that Patreon members get is they do get to watch the playthrough videos that Colin and I do, usually a day or two ahead of time without commercial interruptions. On top of that, they do get to give us ideas of how we should travel forward in some of our games. For example, this particular threat that we are doing was voted on by my Patreons. I gave them the choice of which ones to do, and that one got the most votes. Also moving forward, I'm excited to hear what you have to think about on how we should use our objectives and our Hope Reborn cards. Uh, also, I'm going to place that in the Patreon as well, so maybe they can give me some ideas as well as to how to go forward in this game, leveling up our characters and also leveling up our community. So there you have it. That was the first mission in our threat. I'm excited to dig into this. And if you're excited to see more of the Seven Citadel or anything else Colin and I do, then I need you to meet me at the table.